Hey, it's Pixel here. In my previous video, I had some comments asking about what components I use from the monitor. Of course, in this video, I'm going to show you how I take apart this monitor and what parts I choose and what you guys can look for in a monitor. Of course, this is just this specific model. I, I haven't taken apart other models, so I'm not entirely sure how all this will apply, but hopefully it'll help and you guys can use it as a reference if you do decide to do this project. So here I have a monitor similar to the one I previously bought. This is a W17Q. The one I had purchased was a W17E. However, upon opening it, the components were pretty much the same. Uh, this actually came with a scratch on the screen. I did not see that in the ad, but I'll show you this later on. Once I do remove one of the protective layers, there is no scratch on the actual screen, which is good because we want it to be scratch free. So first we're going to remove some screws. This is the stand that is attached to the monitor. I don't think this is really necessary, but I like to do it anyways just to get it out of the way, just so that it's something I have to worry less about. So we want to start opening a monitor by wedging our screwdriver in the small openings on the sides. Uh, you don't want to stick your screwdriver too far in and damage a component, so be sure to stick it uh, just far enough so that when you turn it, it pops open the monitor and you want to just keep doing this all along the edges until you have most of it off. Again, putting it in just enough so that when you turn it, it pops the monitor open. This monitor was fairly easy to open. It didn't seem to have any screws besides one which was near the stand which I removed previous to this. So after wedging it open, both the front and back were pretty easy to remove. After removing the cover, I'm going to cut these two wires. These wires go to the speakers of the monitor. Unless you want to keep them used for a build or maybe another project, you know, you might want to be careful on how you cut the wires. But I personally, I'm not going to use them for anything. And the speakers that come with it aren't that great, so it's not a big concern to me. Next, we're going to open the metal casing that's holding the monitor. First, we want to remove any cables that we can unplug beforehand, just so that removing it is easier. Here we have these two, which seem to power the LEDs in the monitor. And of course, the dangling power switch, which we're going to disconnect so that it's out of the way. To open this metal case, there's some screws around the sides. You just want to remove them. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And once you're done with those, you can pull open the metal casing. When you open the metal casing, just be sure to be cautious so you don't pull something you shouldn't. More than likely you won't, but it's good to be cautious. Next, we're going to remove the part that receives the video signal. First, we'll remove this screw. Next, we'll remove this cable that's connected to it. On the bottom, we have two screws we need to remove. Some pliers should do the trick. Once they're loose, you can remove them by hand. And we have two other additional connections we need to remove so that we can completely pull it out. The circuit board here is the one that receives the power if the monitor was plugged in. It's held together by a few screws so it comes off quite easily. This power circuit board, I didn't use it in the build. However, this board does have labels. Each label shows you what each wire does and how much voltage each wire uses. This of course will help you when you're referencing as to what cables to use when you want to give your monitor power. Now we're going to take apart the actual piece that will display the image. It has clips all around the edges which can be removed by hand. Just take your time, do it slowly, pull a clip and push the display inward and it'll pop right out. After that, we're going to remove tape from the circuit board. It's not very hard, just take your time. And also, there's a few small screws you need to remove before you can completely free this part. After that, the display should come off quite easily. Moving on to the last step, we want to remove the antique layer layer on this display. And we're going to do that by placing a wet towel on top of it. I left this wet towel on top of the display for about 3 hours. I would suggest you leave it longer. Most videos I saw recommend you leave it overnight, but for me a 3 hour wait worked. When removing the antique layer layer, keep in mind that there are two layers on this monitor. The upper layer is of course the antique layer layer and the one under it is the polarizing layer. Now you want to make sure you don't remove the polarizing layer because if you do, then you won't be able to see what your monitor displays. I remove this layer only using my nails. You could use maybe a plastic razor blade or some sort of plastic tool. I would avoid something made out of metal just because of how easily it can scratch the monitor. As soon as you're able to lift a corner, just pull on it very slowly and it should come off fairly easy. So just a quick overview of the parts I pulled out. Here we have, of course, the display and the wire that connects to the circuit board that has the VGA connection on it. 
And here we have the part that receives the video signal. As you can see on the circuit board, we have two empty slots. The first slot is what receives the power. I'll show you that in the next image. And the second slot is what gives the video signal to the monitor. Next, we have the cable that is going to provide the whole unit power. This was originally connected to the power circuit board. Of course, this is the one I cut off with some pliers and what will be connecting to a four pin Molex. And lastly, we have the power switch. Like I said before in my previous video, I'm not entirely sure if you need this. I have not experimented with it. If you want to try it yourself, go ahead. I decided to leave it in my build and it currently works with it. I don't have to touch it, it's just there. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this brief guide can help you. If you have any additional questions, you can always message me on my Reddit account. I'll link it in the description below. And if you guys like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. Good luck with your modding. This is One Pixel at a Time, signing out.